Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Republic of Ireland All Time Eleven. I'm joined by Gary Spain, Will Dalton, and Peter Henry from Football Faithful. Um, he's all known me by now, Paul Nealon, but this is the goalkeeper video. Uh, we obviously done the video before, or the video series before, but uh, stopped at left back. So we're going to redo the whole thing from scratch. And we've got a full panel here for at least the goalkeeper and the back four. Um, so the names I have, uh, the list I have is Shea Given with 134 caps. Uh, Packy Bonner with 80 caps. Darren Randolph with 35 caps. Alan Kelly Jr. with 34 caps. Dean Coyley, only 11 caps bizarrely. Uh, David Ford, 24 caps. Uh, Jerry Payton and Alan Kelly Sr. with... Uh, so Jerry Payton has 33 caps and Alan Kelly Sr. has... 47 caps, but you want to make a point on that, Gary. Yeah. So, uh, enlighten us. Okay, well, going back, we played a lot fewer internationals in those days. So, Alan Kelly's 47 caps is probably the equivalent of about 120 today. He was our goalkeeper from 1956 to 1973 and played in some of the crucial games at the time. And uh, he was... Well, he, he was the legendary goalie but in my father's time. I never saw him play, but um, I just think we have to consider. And when we're looking at cap totals back in the day, I think the players with a smaller number of caps does not mean that they're um, less of a legend than the guys today. All right, Will? Yeah, definitely. I think Alan Kelly was somebody I definitely grew up hearing about, like you were saying, like from grandfather and, and father and stuff like that. Never have obviously seen him play. I think I've seen the odd little bit from him but I suppose he was the first kind of mainstay of an Irish team and I suppose a goalkeeper then as well it, when you look at that era that that length that he actually played in mm. rather than the cap total just shows how good he was um, but then I suppose getting back to the general debate of, of kind of who we would go with you know obviously the standout the first one for me was Packy Bonner an absolute legend in Euro 88 and, and, and World Cup in 1990 and 94 Um but for me, it would be Shea given 134 caps and the level he played at. The only, I think we said this before, the only misgiving I think with, with Shea's career was he never really played for a spectacularly good club side. Would have loved to have seen him at a Man United in their heyday or an Arsenal. He was at City, he won the title there, I think. But um, mm, he yeah. was part of a very good Newcastle side as well, to be fair. Yeah, but were they, you know. Were they were they a Champions League side, you know, c continuous? I I think Shea was that good, and he could have been at yeah. that level, but um, yeah, for Ireland, uh, for me, the number one. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, I think it, it's a shootout between the two Donegal men. Um, I did like Alan Kelly's son actually as well. He was kind of the backup to Packy Bonner a yeah. lot during the early nineties. Um, I can't really give the nod to somebody I never saw play. It kind of had, you know, mm. I just couldn't do that personally. But Packy Bonner probably gave me. Well, one of my most vivid childhood memories, 1990. Like, what a time. Absolutely. What was that? <laughs> now, the, pe the penalty save against Romania, obviously. Um, just just a magic time for Irish football. Um, but I would have to give it... I, I think when Shea played at his best, he had a higher, higher ceiling than Packy Bonner, I'd definitely say. And very unlucky at City because they kind of binned him off for Joe Hart mm. just when the success came in. Because I remember at the time being really happy for him. He's, like, he deserves to be gone. Thinking finally he's got there. Yeah, he's exactly, now in that exactly. team that's built around him. Yeah. He's paid his dues. And I think he was only in his only early 30s when, when he went there, which is relatively young for, for a goalkeeper. And, you know, you said 134 caps. If you hadn't taken taken that kind of two year break I think he might have broken 150 almost so mm. performed at an amazingly high level for such a, a long period of time 2002 World Cup excellent he wasn't great in the Euros 2012 I think he just came back from yeah. injury but still what a servant Irish football you know and then he was obviously part of the squad then in the 2016 squad I think he was more kind of like to help the the younger lads out and at one point I think serves a mention because it's been absolutely fantastic lately like Stan Randolph I think albeit he's probably not going to be anyone's number one here he has been yeah. since he's gotten the Ireland jersey probably against that game against uh, Germany when Shane Long scored yeah. ever since he's came in he's been fantastic for us I'm not sure of his clean sheets to games ratio but I mean arguably between himself and David Ford played in the kind of poorest teams in regards to what we had with yeah. Shea Given and Packy Bonner it, what they had in front of him that's not a knock at any of the players that yeah. play, play but yeah. I just think Darren's probably had a harder task and his clean sheets now are, 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 you know, 
Darren, I think, is the best player in the Irish squad at the moment. I think he's the... I know we, we might look at Seamus as the captain and the leader, but I think the form player and probably the most underrated player, and I think even Mick said it during the week, he was re- really surprised at the level he'd seen Darren at perform for the country and in training. I think he said, you know, he always knew he was a really good goalkeeper, but didn't think he was that good. Um, And I think Darren... You know, with all due respect to Middlesbrough, he's definitely playing within himself and could definitely play at a higher level. And I think, yeah, he's been absolutely superb for Ireland and I think he's the best player in the squad right now. And I yeah. think that save against Gibraltar away could prove to be absolutely crucial. Mm. I mean, OK, it was only Gibraltar, but it was some save and we, we more or less scored from the clearance from the... So that had we gone one down in, in Gibraltar, it could have been very different and the yeah. campaign would have been over, you know? Yeah. yeah. And well, the assist against sorry, the assist against Germany allows us to go down in, in folklore <laughs> as well, don't it? Hockey Bonner had a famous assist. It was assist. Good Niall Quinn, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he had the angry face and then he just pumped it up the pitch. Like, yeah, so. You mentioned that on the last one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and the save against Paulson as well, against Denmark. I mean, that's a match winning save, although we didn't win the match, but you know what I mean? We got yeah. the late equaliser. Um, Dean Coyley. A very, very, very good Premier League goalkeeper. Yeah. And very, very unlucky that Shea Given. I think but this is goes towards my argument for Shea Given is that you look at how good Shea Given was that someone the level of Dean Coyley, probably if he was, I don't know, at Scotland or, or Northern Ireland or somebody else would have got he would have been their number one. Do you know? Yeah, okay. Like, to be fair, he was a really, really good goalkeeper. He was at what West Brom and, and Charlton he was really good at. So yeah. I, it's, eleven caps really surprises me, to be honest. Another backup keeper uh, is Jerry Payton, actually, who was a great yeah, backup to Packy mm-hmm. Bonner. Um, again, probably would have got more caps if he was from a different era. But it's, yeah, it's yeah. a really tough position, goalkeeper, isn't it? Because like if you're if you're a defender, you might get moved. Or we can see with Gary Dar- Gary Darty today. I'm sorry, Matt Darty today. But you might get moved into another position. But, but well, Gary like, did as if well. You're, yeah, if you're a, if you're a great goalkeeper, like and there's another head. Yeah. A better lad, slightly better than you. There, you could be stuck behind him for like especially fi- the international 15 level. years. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like which it's, is what Jerry had, <laughs> and Alan the same as well. They basically, yeah, yeah. 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 You know. It's not like when you know if you're if you're a, a right back. You remember even in the early nineties, Dennis Irwin was the best left back in the Premier League, but he quite often played right back to mm. get him into the team. Um, it's just a, it's one of them tough positions that. Yeah, you don't you don't rotate your goalkeepers. You don't bring one on. So the cap the caps. You know the totals of caps can be ridiculously low for some like top class goalkeepers. Mm. Yeah, um, if we're kind of going then, if you're you're picking your absolute number one, Gary, who are you going for? If if I had to choose, and I flip flopped a little bit, it would be one of the Donny Gall men, and I'd probably go for Given at the moment. Yeah. Well, Shay all the way. I think this could be a clean sweep. I'm going for Shay as well. Shay well for me as well. That's. <laughs> Well, I think, look, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't fault the man. 134 caps, the longevity of his career. Um, it just goes to show. I mean, I know Packy Bonner was a good, great keeper as well. 80 caps, you know, yeah. spent his career at Celtic as well. Um, but as I say, he, Shea was playing top level Premier League. Probably deserved. It probably was oh, I suppose in a way, kind of like Robbie Keane, is that you never really got the recognition that he deserved. Um in like the Premier League, so to speak, like that he did deserve that move, but never really got the move. And probably when he did get the move, as Will said, to City, it was probably that a little bit too late for him, unfortunately. But then he went to Aston Villa afterwards and still done really well. And yeah. then he went to Stoke then as well, didn't he? So, yeah, true professional in fairness to him. And we can see now his coaching career has taken off. Like some of the other lads as well have, have gone on. Jerry Payton's had a great coaching career at Arsenal. Dean Kiley is now coaching as well. Alan Kelly, obviously, back involved. Mm-hmm. In the senior side, so mm. um, yeah, it shows obviously the quality of the guys as well and their personalities that people want them around as coaches to give that experience that they've gained through their club football and on the international level back to um, you know, teams coming through or, or whatever. Yeah, Eric. well, I think that one was was a fairly straightforward. I think that's the only one that's kind of be, going to be okay. as straightforward <laughs> as it gets. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Do you agree or disagree with us? It's obviously. Uh, a clean sweep here for Shay Given. Um, hopefully, we'll hear from Shay as well. Maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> hopefully, he's watching. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments and drop a like on the video. Thanks for watching.